On a recent video, I showed you how to keep your phone protected with several different basic steps that you can use to strengthen your security and your privacy. Today, I will show you 15 settings that are found in Android phones that you should disable. All of these settings are found in newer Android operating systems, so if you have an older phone or one from a different brand, your settings might be a little bit different. If all of these tips are things that you've already done, then send this video to your family and friends and let me do the tech support for you. This video is sponsored by Delete Me, so stick around for a great discount and find out how you can scrub your data from the internet the easy way. Let's go ahead and start with diagnostic data. So first we are going to disable some stuff that you might have left on whenever you first got your phone and set it up. These are settings that Google, Samsung, or other providers might want you to opt into while you set up your phone, and you may have just clicked OK and accepted without actually realizing that these settings are optional. So to do this, we're going to scroll down, tap the little gear icon for settings. I am using an S23 Ultra, so this is what my settings page looks like. I'll scroll down to security and privacy. Where is security and privacy? There it is. Click there, then scroll down and click on privacy, and then click on other privacy settings. First, do you see this little toggle switch right here? If that's set to on, go ahead and turn that off. That is an optional toggle. You do not need to leave that on, so go ahead and disable that. That is actually a setting that lets Big Brother Sammy collect data about your phone's diagnostics and usage. It is completely optional, so just turn it off. Now, Google also has a usage and diagnostics setting, so click into that one and turn it off for Android. That can be found right here. It says usage and diagnostics. If that is turned on, go ahead and turn it off, like so. Customization service found right here, I'm going to let that load, is an optional setting that lets apps customize your experience based Based on your interests and routines. This is more data that is collected about you and your phone. So disable it for any apps that you see here that you don't need it connected for. As you can see here at the bottom, I have had this disabled since I first set up this phone. So it's entirely off. I've never actually turned it on, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this on so I can show you what it looks like. So I turn that on. I hit agree a couple of times, and then this opens up the customization service page. So there's this big toggle up at the top top, you just have to hit that to turn off customization service entirely. Or if you want to, you can click into customized apps and you will see apps here that have customization service turned on. So you can turn any of those off that you don't want collecting your data. And I'm just going to recommend just turning the entire thing off so that it never collects that data. You don't really need it on. Now we're still under this customization service option. Click on data management. So data management it shows you all that data that's sent to Samsung. You can toggle these one by one, or you can just click that toggle again at the top of the customization service page and just turn it off entirely. So that's what I'm going to do. Hit stop and we can go back. Okay, now click on ads. So this is general information that apps can use to customize ads that you see. Your device has a special call sign. I'm gonna call it a call sign because I'm a ham radio operator. It's called an advertising ID. You can delete this data by clicking on delete advertising ID. So scroll down, click delete advertising ID, and then just click right there. Now, if you have this on, you can also customize the types of data that apps can collect to show you ads under ad privacy. Click on add privacy here. And at the bottom of this page, it will tell you exactly what each of these different options means. So add topics allows Android to note topics of interest based on the apps that you've used recently and how frequently you use them. App suggested ads allows apps that you use. They can also determine what you like based on how you use them. And lastly, we have add measurement. Apps you use can ask Android for information to help them measure the performance of their ads, Android lets apps collect limited types of data. So if you want to, you can click into each of those and disable all those different options. There you go, just like that. Now go back to the other privacy settings and choose activity controls. These are Google activity controls, so choose your Google account and then we will start at the top. Web and app activity is the very first thing you're going to see right here. This saves your activity on Google sites and apps to give you faster search 
results and recommendations, but you can disable that. In order to do so, click turn off and then click turn off right there. Now, if you just turn it off, it's not going to delete any previous activity. So you can also choose turn off and delete activity. Right now I'm gonna leave that on so I can show you the other settings. You can also uncheck any sub settings that currently have the blue check marks next to them. This includes Chrome history and voice and audio activity. Right underneath this, if for some reason you choose to leave that on, I would highly recommend going into your auto delete options and turning on auto delete. This will delete all that data after a set amount of time. So you don't need to keep remembering to go into this page and deleting everything manually. If you are finding this video helpful, a subscribe would mean so much to me. Subscribing is a simple way of showing me which videos you find helpful and valuable. And it tells me which direction I should take my channel in. All right, let's go back down to my phone and scroll down. You will see an option for location history. Now location history is pretty self-explanatory. You can turn off location history in the exact same way that you turned off the web activity just above that. Scroll down, there is YouTube history. You can also disable that completely if you would like to. So just hit turn off if you want to disable YouTube history. Now underneath there is personalized ads, which you can click into to customize your ad experience with Google. So let's click into my ad experience here and scroll down and see what happens. Okay, mine is kind of weird. I've got uh, Amazon here and Comcast and Verizon, a bunch of ads for things that I don't even use. Deutsche Telekom, what? <laughs> ColourPop Cosmetics, that makes sense. They just released a Sailor Moon collab. Uh, to me, a travel brand. Cracker Barrel, they're calling me out on my obsession with Southern food here. Thanks a lot, Google. That can show you exactly what kind of ads that are being personalized to your specific account. So you can go in here and you can delete ones that don't make sense to you. Like a Deutsche Telekom, I don't need to see that. So got it, fewer ads from this brand are heading your way. <laughs> I don't mind the Cracker Barrel ads though. That's fine, they'll just make me hungry. But to be honest, I really don't want any of these ads to be shown to me. So way up at the top, click on turn off personalized ads. This is really going to ask you, hey, you probably wanna leave this on so you get a bunch of personalized stuff, but honestly, you can just turn it off. I'm gonna leave mine on right now. So I, again, I can show you all the different settings. Go back and you'll see this option that says partner ad settings. So go ahead and click on that. Scroll all the way to the bottom, open this little fold down menu that you see here and uncheck this box if it is checked. This will uncheck saving data from sites that partner with Google. So all of this looks pretty invasive. And in my opinion, if you aren't getting paid for it, then it's not your job to fix these products. For example, with diagnostics and usage data, let the manufacturers figure that out and pay their own employees a fair wage to run their own diagnostics. They don't need to get that data from your phone. Now let's go ahead and find our permissions manager. So starting again with the gear icon up at the top, click on the gear icon and then go down in your settings until you see security and privacy. Again, we're going to click on privacy and then the first option you see, which is permission manager. Now each and every single app that you install on your phone may ask you if you want to grant it permissions to access other parts of your phone. For example, when you download Instagram, it will ask you for permission to access your camera. That one's kind of obvious. Instagram is used to share photos and videos. So that one makes sense. But what if you download something like an app to control your thermostat and it asks for camera permissions. Well, it doesn't really need camera permission, so you can deny it access to that feature on your phone. If you ever accidentally grant permissions and you want to remove them later, you can go into this settings page and turn off permissions for whatever thing that you had granted. Like, let's look at call logs, for example. Okay, so scrolling down, Everything looks pretty logical, like Google Fi. Yeah, of course, that's my phone carrier of choice, the Pixel Watch in case I wanna make calls through there. All of that makes sense. But if I scroll down to the bottom, you will notice that there's Fitbit, Lemetric Time, and Whitings, <laughs> or Whittings, depending on who you are. Now, I'm gonna show you something. This. This right here, that is the Lemetric time. It's a clock. It does not need access to my call log. So that was one of those items that I immediately denied permissions for. I was like, no, you don't need that. I'm not making calls through my YouTube counter. I'm just not doing that. Okay, here's another one. Let's look at location. <laughs> this is a fun one. I need to disable a lot of these. Some of them make sense, allowed all the time, like Nest. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe not Google. I might want to disable that one. If I scroll down though, eColor Life allowed only while using the app. Uh, that's this little 
light. It lights up and that's all it does. I don't think this needs access to my location. If it does to connect via Bluetooth, I'll just make it ask every time. So I'm going to switch it to ask every time. See, here's the thing. Sometimes you will download an app and think that it needs access to all of these permissions. So you approve everything. But once you start using it, you realize that it never actually uses that location data for anything pertinent to the app's features. So you can just go here and disable all the things. Of course, if something gets wonky because you disable location services, for example, the app will tell you to turn it back on before you can use the app. So you can always just go back in and enable it if it makes something act weird. Now I'm going to show you my camera permissions because this is an important one too. When we look at camera permissions, you will notice that I don't let any apps access my camera all the time because that's kind of creepy, right? So I would recommend denying all the time access, especially to things like your camera and being really critical of which apps you do allow camera access to. Now, if I scroll down, I will see Instagram here. Clicking on an app like Instagram, it only gets camera access whenever I'm using the app, but clicking on permissions lets me see everything that Instagram actually has access to. Now, TikTok is another one. Here we go. I'll open TikTok. Yes, I do use TikTok. I am a content creator. It's a part of my job, so <laughs> it's, it's on there for a reason. TikTok annoyingly keeps asking for access to my contacts, and I deny it every single time. But if I ever accidentally for some reason hit the wrong button, I can always go in here and tell TikTok to deny access to my contacts. It's right there. And if I ever want to change it, I can hit allow or don't allow. And I can always just go back to don't allow if I accidentally turned it on. So I would say that your app permissions page and your permissions manager is a very, very important page. And it's an important one to know where to access it. Now we're going to go back to this privacy page and click on view all permissions. So this page goes into detail on all the different apps and details on which apps have used permissions during a given time. Now you can click into any of these permissions and that will give you a timeline of when the apps had access those specific tools. So let's choose my camera because I'm always using my camera. <laughs> you can click into anything that you don't recognize. For example, if Instagram for some reason did not need access to my camera, I could click there and click ask every time or don't allow. Now with all of these permissions pages, leaving them on could potentially drain your battery life faster as well. So even if you don't care about security and privacy, which you should, then there is another reason to disable them that has nothing to do with cybersecurity. Now, here's a step that you can take online to protect your data because you can protect your phone all day, but if your data is already online, it's easy for anybody to find it. Data broker websites make our data easily searchable, publicly available, and that's data like your full name, your home address, your phone number, your email address, and more. And yes, you can totally go to each of these sites one by one find your data, request that they remove it. But that could take days every single month to do because there are so many data brokers out there. There's hundreds. So I signed up for Delete Me many, many years ago as a paid customer, and they take the hassle and stress off my shoulders. Delete Me sends those opt-outs to all those different data brokers so that I don't have to by searching all of the data broker websites. They send them all those manual opt-out requests. All I have to do is chill and read the report every couple of months. Even though several of my friends who work in cybersecurity did recommend Delete Me to myself, I realized that you might be a little sus about trusting a company to do this work for you. Delete Me takes a very strong approach to data security as well with regulatory compliance, internal and external auditing, multi-factor authentication, for your account and security awareness training for their own employees. And when it comes to threat monitoring, Delete Me monitors their own network traffic 24 seven for anomalies and they encrypt personal information, both in transit and at rest. And if you are skeptical, you can always reach out directly to Delete Me with your own security questions. So if you are ready to take control over your data online, especially that phone number and your email address and your home address, then check out joindeleteme.com com slash morse code to get 20% off any of their consumer plans with the coupon code snubs. That's S N U B S, which will automatically apply at checkout at that link. That's join delete me.com slash morse code, just like the name of the show for 20% off with coupon code snubs. Thank you so much to delete me for sponsoring this episode. Now we're going to back out of all these settings and go back to that security and privacy page and just click scan to see if there's anything that I should scan. 
scan and look for right now. There we go, we're scanning, okay. So if it finds anything, it will show you some different options up at the top. So we'll look through my options right now. If you don't have a lock screen already enabled, which you should, then you can choose to enable your lock screen here. So make sure your lock screen is on, check that your accounts are secure. So I can go down here and make sure my accounts are secure. This one is going to tell me that my password hasn't been changed in a long time. My password is incredibly long. So I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but I will change it eventually. It also says that there's recent app activity. And this kind of makes sense because I have a lot of different phones that I've been reviewing lately. So a lot of different things have been logged into my Samsung account. So that's also something that you should audit too if you have several different devices is go in here from time to time and audit what devices have access to your account. This is also where you can turn on Find My Mobile. And then there's App Security. Let's talk about that one really quick. This is where you can enable additional device protection like antivirus if it's included in your operating system. Now, I don't have device protection turned on because I have good security hygiene and I don't want it to continuously scan my phone, which does have that caveat of it can drain your battery faster. Also, it's McAfee, which is a bit bloated in terms of antivirus. It's decently fast on a phone, but again, that's not something that I want turned on all the time. You don't really need this if you are just downloading apps from the Google Play Store, which I mentioned in my last phone security video as well. So underneath there, we can check for updates. I think it's a good idea to audit those settings from time to time, just to make sure everything is consistent with your current lifestyle and you've made sure that everything is up to date. Now, one setting that I really do wanna mention is this offline finding, which can allow you to find your lost device even when it's not connected to a network. And it does this by allowing other Android devices. So go into offline finding. If you want that turned on, you can enable this if you are worried about losing your phone. But if you do, then I recommend encrypting offline location right there. This means your device's location is going to be encrypted whenever it's sent to other nearby Android devices. And it can only be decrypted by a pin that you set. So when you encrypt it, it's going to ask you to turn on a one, two, three, four, five, six digit pin, and then you can click save. I actually prefer not having my phone findable, so I'm gonna leave that off. Now, lastly, on this security and privacy page all the way down at the bottom is this setting that says other security settings. Click into that. On this page, we're going to disable make passwords visible. So turn that off right there. This is an option that lets you see password characters for like a split second while you're typing them in before they change into an asterisk or a dot. Now, real talk, I was at an influencer event one time and the influencers with hundreds of thousands of followers got a special Wi-Fi network to log in to that was faster than all of us normie influencers. Now I definitely sniped the password because I saw this girl logging into it since I saw each and every character that she was putting in for a split second. So treat all your content creators equally. Give us all access to the same fast internet PR people. Gosh, anyway, that was a side story. But while you're here, go ahead and disable any admin apps under this option as well. None of your apps need admin privileges. Okay, folks. So this is right underneath that make passwords visible section. So click into that and then you can disable anything that was turned on. For example, find my device could have been an optional one that was turned on, but mine's already turned off. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning. Now, if you happen to be going to a place like DEF CON, which is the biggest hacker convention in the US, or you just wanna protect your phone from being seen if somebody is war driving through your neighborhood, you can turn off a couple of settings. These are Wi-Fi scanning and Bluetooth scanning. So to do so we're going to go back to our main settings page, scroll down, find location for location services, click on location services, and then turn off Wi-Fi scanning and Bluetooth scanning right there and right there. So both of those options continuously send pings to various frequencies to look for local Bluetooth devices or Wi-Fi networks, even when Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is off in your drop-down menu. This can drain your battery and it also lets attackers know where you are within a vicinity. Now, if you do want to continue allowing apps to use Wi-Fi for more accurate location, and if you need to let apps use Bluetooth for more accurate location, then you 
can keep those enabled if you're not in an environment where you need to worry about having those different things make your phone vulnerable. All right, next up is mobile data. So go back to the main settings page. You'll know you're there if you just hit the gear icon in your drop down menu where it says settings at the top. Scroll all the way down until you see an option that says apps just apps. This is where all of your apps are listed. You can access all of those apps permissions here, but we're actually going to click on an app and choose mobile data, which lets apps access data in the background while you aren't using it. So talk about battery drain. Now I need to find one that actually has mobile data turned on so I can show you what it looks like. Most of mine are turned off actually, but I think Instagram has this on because I allow it to update in the background. Oh my gosh, I have so many apps. Where is Instagram? All right, so Instagram, ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> mobile data, 9.29 gigs used since June 5th. That's a lot of mobile data. <laughs> so if I wanted to, I could just disable allow background data usage right there, and that will disable Instagram from being able to do that, which will also save some battery. Disable anything that doesn't need to be on all the time. I do allow some of these to stay on for convenience or out of necessity. Another great example is uh, YouTube music. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, ooh, so many apps, YouTube music. I do allow this to download new songs in the background and cache music for me automatically. So I'll just leave that on. All right. Also from this crazy app menu, <laughs> these three dots up at the top, that's going to let you access another menu. So click on those three dots and then click on special access right here. Scroll down and click on usage data access. At the top, it tells us that these apps can monitor other apps that you use. They know who your eye ISP is and some other usage data. So how about no? Disable any that should not have access to that information. And in my case, that's going to be quite a few. So I'm gonna turn off a lot of those. Next, we're disabling installing unknown apps. This is a really important one. So on my S23 Ultra, I click on the gear, I click on settings. So I'm on the settings menu again, right here, as you can see. Again, we're scrolling down to security and privacy. Where are you at? There it is. Scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says install unknown apps and click on that. Here, you're going to see a list of a bunch of different apps. So at the top, it says installing apps from this source may put your phone and data at risk. I would just recommend disabling all of the apps listed here. If there's any of them enabled, that means that app could install another app. So say you have the one for Chrome enabled. If you accidentally visited a malicious site while browsing Chrome on your phone and it installed an app, well, it could be malicious. So turn them all off. Don't give them that option. Any apps that you might want to install should be available in the Google Play Store or your phone's app store. All right, last off is a pro tip. This one's kind of cool. I learned it when I went to DEF CON many years ago, and now it's really easy to access. So turn on developer settings by going to about phone, which is going to be on the main settings page. Scroll to the bottom, go to about phone, click on software information, then click on this build number, and that is going to turn on developer mode. It may ask you for a pin, so you will need to type in your pin and then you will turn into a developer. So go back to your main menu and then you'll see an option down at the bottom that says developer options. So click on developer options and this is going to give you a brand new menu page. Scroll down to quick settings, developer tiles right here and click into that and enable the one that says sensors off. It's right here. This will let you adjust your phone's sensor so that can be things like your accelerometer or the gyroscope from your quick settings menu by pulling down from the top and toggling the little sensor icon on or off. So in my example, I can pull down here and here's the little sensors right here on or off. And that's what it looks like. It's super, super easy. Now, when you do that, turning your sensors off will disable some of your phone's features and you won't be able to use them till you turn that back on. But this will remove some app's ability to capture that kind of data from nearby devices about your own phone. But because it can disable general phone usage, I really don't recommend using this unless you are in a rogue environment, like you're going to DEF CON where top-notch security is extremely important. So what are some settings that you would recommend turning off on an Android phone. Should I do a video like this for iPhones as well? Because they do have different options. Comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.